Hello, Dr. J here, and I'm going to give you a series of videos introducing you to the Fourier series. What you should get from this introduction of the Fourier series is that the Fourier series is only good for continuous time and periodic signals. Future videos will show that you can think of the Fourier series as a sampled version of the Fourier transform. Also, this video is not focused on discrete time signals yet, but this video is focused, as I mentioned before, only on continuous time and periodic signals, and this will be a subject of later videos. Okay, let's look at the math behind the Fourier series, and then I'll give you a graphic demonstration. So here, we have x of t. It's going to be composed of a constant signal and a wavy signal or AC signal. You can think of this x of t, this is the first stage of approximating our periodic function as sines and cosines. A0 is a constant which moves the signal up or down and cosine and sine combination basically moves the signal left or right. And A1 and B1 are the Fourier coefficients that provides how much of the cosine there is in xt and B1. And this is only for the fundamental frequency where the fundamental frequency is F0. 2 pi F0 is the radian frequency. Now we're going to add some more components to this and in this case we're going to add the second harmonic. Okay, The second harmonic is just twice the fundamental frequency. And then we'll finally add a lot more cosine and sine functions to make it good close approximations of our periodic signal. In the example that we'll be going, it's a square wave. So here's our fundamental frequency. NF0 is called the harmonic frequency of the fundamental, where A2 and B2 corresponds to the second harmonic, and NF0 is the nth harmonic, and AN and BN are the Fourier coefficients of the nth harmonic. And we note that N is an integer. So we only can have a discrete set of frequencies that are harmonics of the fundamental frequency. As defined here, the harmonic frequency is just an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. And then finally, our coefficients here, A0, which is our DC signal, and A and B N are our Fourier coefficients. And I'll in a later video I'll show that these Fourier coefficients are the components of the signal and has a vector analogy that you see in uh, vector algebra. So these are just basically the components of these signals. Just like a vector is composed of other vectors, we have a function composed of other functions, and our function is a periodic function composed of other periodic functions, and in this case, it's sines and cosines. So how much of the sines and cosines do we need to generate a periodic signal based on these functions? So here's a more compact notation of representing our periodic signal x of t. We have a constant term, I like to call this the DC term, which moves the signal up or down, and we have a whole bunch of sines and cosines with the a n and b n defined as our Fourier coefficients, and I call this part right here our AC part. Okay, again, the cosines and sines basically shifts the signal left and right, and the amount of signal there is in a cosine and sine is governed by the Fourier coefficients. Now, I'm not going to derive how we find A0, AN, and BN. I'll do that in a later video. I'll just give you the result here and then demonstrate it for a square wave. So here, A0 is basically the DC signal, and this is basically the area underneath the curve of x of t, and we just divide it by A0, which gives us basically our DC or average value. Here, AN is defined as uh, 2 over t0, and we're just going to integrate it over one period, just like we do the integration over one period for the A0. So for one period, we can go from minus t0 divided by 2 to plus t0 over 2, but it can be over any uh, period. So it can be here, the lower limit could be 0, and the upper limit can be t. Now we take that in, inside the integral, we have x of t multiplied by cosine, 
2 pi n t divided by the period t0, where 1 over t0 is just simply the fundamental frequency f0, and we integrate it with respect to time. Again, what this interpretation of this equation shows is that how similar is xt with the various uh, cosine functions of the fun that has a fundamental frequency and the harmonics. Here we have bn, same thing goes with the uh, sine. Again, I'm not going to derive these equations. I'll derive these in a later video. I just want to show you what the bottom line results are. So here we have bn for the sine functions, and we're multiplying it from xt and the sine functions. See how much how much similar they are. How the xt is similar to a sine function with the fundamental as well as the harmonics and we're integrated again over one period. 2 over t0 is our normalizing factors and again I'll show you where that came from in a later video. So this is the basic equations of how to calculate the coefficients a0, a, n, b, n sort of like our recipe and how to form our periodic signal. Now let me just show you the Fourier coefficients for square wave. I'm not going to derive the, what the result is. I'm just going to give you the result and in a later video because of the gory details in the math, I'll derive that in a later video. What I want to motivate is that a square wave can be composed of other sines and cosine waves. Okay? How do we choose those coefficients is the magic and the gory details is the math. Okay, so what we have is a function x of t where it's high of a, positive a, between 0 and t0 of 2, and negative for t0 over 2 over t0. In other words, graphically, we have the square wave, x of t, has a height of a for half of the period, and negative a for the other half. So we have this period, t0, and t0 is the period when this function starts to repeat itself, and that it's uh, high for half a period and low for a half a period. Again, I won't derive what the Fourier coefficients, how we get it. Let me just give you the result behind what the Fourier coefficients are, and I'll give you a graphical demonstration of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just give you the results of what the Fourier coefficients are for a square wave given here. So we see that the average value is zero. So the area on top is equal to the area at the bottom, giving us an average value. Also, a n, which deals with the cosine part, is equal to zero. Now, I'll talk about in a later video the symmetry. Cosine we know is an even function, and I'll define an even function in a later video. But we could see here that this is an odd function, so it's going to be composed of cosine uh, sine functions. So our sine functions, b n, is 4 a divided by pi over n. What's important is that we can always choose a so that this is equal to 1, and that the coefficients b n will decrease by 1 over n only for odd multiples of the fundamental frequency. The even multiples, um, when it's even, has zero coefficients. So none of the even harmonics occur in this uh, periodic function. So here's our definition. It has zero average value. Our function consists of a whole bunch of signs. Since this is an odd function, it's composed of a whole bunch of sine functions. So so a sine is an odd function, and that the coefficients decrease by 1 over n. So what I want to do is just do a graphical demonstration where I decrease the coefficients by 1 over n as we increase odd multiples of the harmonic frequencies. Hello, Dr. J here. What I'm going to do here in this demo is to generate a square wave using nothing but sine waves. So what I'm going to do is show you, here's a sine function. We'll start off with the basic harmonic. And what we have here is a plot of that graph. Now what I'm going to do is add another harmonic, which is the third harmonic, and paste it right here. So I have one-third of the third harmonic. And we're going to plot this. Now this x term here is just that the that's the way it's wired here in the software, x instead of t. But x and t are just variables. So we'll just stick with those. And you can see here, starting to approach a square wave, 
even when I add the third harmonic. So what I'm going to do is uh, add a fifth harmonic. Let me just cut and paste with this. And what you can see here now is that I have the fundamental frequency, one third of the third harmonic and one fifth of the fifth harmonic. And that's due to the calculations of the Fourier coefficients done earlier. So I'm going to graph that and you can see I'm getting more uh, toward uh, a square wave. Now I'm just going to keep on doing so on, add the seventh harmonic, graph it, and you can see more waves in this due to the seventh harmonic. So I just cut and paste the ninth harmonic in here, and we're going to graph it, and you can see we have getting closer to a square wave and there's more squiggly lines here and this is due to the ninth harmonic now and then finally we'll do one last one the eleventh harmonic and cut and paste and here you can see this is up to the eleventh harmonic now again we have the fundamental frequency one-third of the third harmonic one-fifth of the fifth harmonic one-seventh of the seventh harmonic one-ninth of the ninth harmonic and one eleventh of the eleventh harmonic. Now we're going to graph it, and there you go. So hopefully this convinces you that uh, take any periodic function, and when you calculate the Fourier coefficients, you can generate uh, any periodic function based on sines and cosines. Now since the sign uh, here we chose, the function here is an odd function square wave, okay, where we have anti-symmetry with respect to the origin. What I'm going to do now is add a DC signal or constant uh, to the, both the fundamental and this function F2 was supposed to generate the square wave. So I'm just going to add a constant and what you should see is that all the curves should shift up. So here I'll add a 0.5 and in this second one I'll add a 0.5 as well. And then I'm going to graph it and you see everything shifts up. So hopefully the previous demo shows you, the graphical demo shows you that any periodic function can be generated by sines and cosine functions. Since we're dealing here with a square wave that's an odd function then and a zero average value, then we have a0 is equal to zero and a n is equal to zero for the cosine, so there's no cosine terms and we just have b n terms uh, associated with the sine. Now the next video will show you how to calculate these coefficients using the idea of symmetry and applying mechanics of what the definitions in deriving the Fourier coefficients and applying it. Signing off is Dr. J.